most of the time I tell lie to my child. Telling him that everything is okay. You know, mommy tells his small friends, my daddy is a policeman. My daddy used to carry the gun. Sometimes, he used to get the gun and try to shoot mommy. Lydia is not alone. According to reports of the United Nations, the South Pacific island country of Papua New Guinea is one of the most violent places in the world. In the remote highlands, the Australian government found nearly every woman has experienced some form of domestic abuse. Locals admit that violence is part of the culture. Fighting is uh, it's a living. Where we stay with it, we sleep with it, we eat with it. In fact, according to the World Bank, the murder rates here are among the highest in the world, in some places nearly 10 times the global average. The spears that they, the arrows that they are using, they are made of wood. You cannot get them on x-rays. So essentially you just have to look for them, open up and look for them. This Doctors Without Borders clinic in the violent highlands region has a constant flow of surgeries on wounded tribesmen. But this clinic's real focus is on the overwhelming number of women injured by family violence. The problem has become so severe that the country is taking small steps to bring gender violence under control. This September, Parliament passed a bill that makes all forms of domestic violence a crime, punishable with fines and jail time. But change is slow. Men are being taught, you know, that this is the way you should treat your, your wife or your sister or your mo even your mother. In the past, I treat women like, uh, you know, it is nobody. We are burdened by our, our customs. And we've been keeping a woman standard very low. And even when families try to protect their girls from the common danger of rape, violent customs are hard to overcome. Hospital workers treated a teen who went out at night and came back wounded. Yeah, it's typical in here. She went outside with some other girls. Uh, the brother said, why are you here with the girls? You should be in the house. He flattened the post knife, chopped her on the head. We're helping like the most urgent needs, but we're not doing anything to get people to solve problems in a more peaceful way. I thought that that was normal for a woman to be beaten by her husband. I never thought it wasn't right. In the end, I just thought I should run away. But despite a growing economy, safe houses for abused women are few. Having a response mechanisms in place that work for women who are facing violence, no, we, we basically don't have it. The social services that people receive come through NGOs and churches. Sister Lorraine, a Catholic nun, runs three safe houses on Bougainville Island. I like to create a village where when people come, women, children come, people come for workshops. Uh, at least they will look around and there's color, there's brightness in their life. Because when people are suffering from trauma, their life is so gloomy. I hope they will grow because it can get very hot down there. You know, the women that we work with, children that we work with, what is most alive to me is the trauma that they suffer each day. You know, because trauma doesn't just go away quickly. Yeah? But slowly, women like Lydia are confronting the problem. Now, recently backed by law, she filed a protection order against her husband. In our culture, men, they think that uh, they are the bosses and they have the right to control the women. I want women to know that uh, we have our own rights. <laughs> 